Today is a bit of an unusual one for me because we're not talking about drones. We're going to be taking a look at this. The iScooter MX-5. Now, yes, you're probably sitting here thinking, oh my God, he's dropped to the level of reviewing electric scooters. Don't worry, you're not going to be seeing loads of these coming up on the channel. However, I was offered this to take a look at. I've been offered a number of them in the past and I've always turned stuff like this down. But this one intrigued me slightly because it is classed as an off-road scooter. And I do live in some places that I would be able to actually use a product like this. So I thought, you know what, let's give it a look, let's give it a try. And what I'm going to do today is share with you a bit of a journey that I went on with this scooter. And then at the end, I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Okay, so today's journey is going to be a trip around this. This is a local dam for me. This actually provides all of the water for my area. It's actually much larger than it looks from here because it actually goes all the way around there and we're going to start at this side and work our way around with the scooter and then i'll show you some stuff on the way around now the trip around the whole dam is somewhere between six and eight kilometers depending on the route you take i start up in this area here and then work our way around all of the different parts of the lake heading all the way down around having to go around a few of the little alcoves as you can see there's no bridges across these you end up having to go all the way back up and round as we do all the way around here and then make it back to here where the dam is at the bottom and then return to the main area back at the top now the footage I'm showing you here is recorded on a DJI Action 2 hanging around my neck on the lanyard. I do at times swap it over to on the bike mount but it is very very unstable when I do that simply as a result of the ground that I'm going over. Now the idea of this footage is just to give you an idea of what the scooter is putting up with. What we're going to do is work our way around the lake. I'll be stopping at various parts, sharing with you some thoughts and hopefully some nice footage of what I've got to see on the day. Now at various points on this trip we're going to stop and take a look around the lake just to show you some of the views that I got to see. At times there isn't a lot of talking in this video however hopefully by the end of it you will get an idea of what this scooter has put up with and what it is capable of doing. Bit of off-road power. Oh, oh bone shaking. I'm not sure if they designed this for this kind of off-road, but it's what it's getting. Getting up to the top end with this is going to look fantastic. I think the path's a bit smoother over the other side. Or at least I hope it is. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Well, so far so good, no issues. We've made it through quite a rough part of the woods. The ground here isn't exactly um, perfectly smooth. We've got to keep going. Battery level wise, we're looking okay. Um, that's the mode change. If I just press the power button, will this tell me how far we've traveled today? 2.7 kilometers. So that's what we've done so far. Now I've just quickly stopped to show you this crossing I found. Now it's really quite pretty this time of year. There's a lot of water around. Obviously it's been raining a lot here. And you can see there's a huge amount of water working through. We're going to go over the bridge there. Thank you. 
try not to move around too much on this path simply because oh oh that was deep we need a ramp up we need a ramp up oh come on you can do it I think I'm gonna have to stop and wipe my eyes back on the rough stuff Now just to pause here on the trail a moment and walk you through the main specifications and features of the iScooter iH5. The scooter is fitted with an 800 watt rear mounted motor capable of pushing it up to 28 miles an hour or 45 kilometers an hour. According to iScooter that motor with the built in battery is capable of delivering between 24 and 28 miles of range or 40 to 45 kilometers. It features both front and rear disc brakes as well as front and rear independent suspension with there being two springs on the back and two springs on each side at the front making four and the rear suspension is fully adjustable as well. It has a built in 720 watt hour 15 amp hour battery running at 48 volts and this can charge from flat in about five to eight hours and they provide a mains adapter in the box which is 54 volts 2 amps. The battery itself is located under the main deck and there's a charge port on the side. As this is an off-road scooter, it does come fitted with 10 inch wheels which have off-road tyres on as standard, which should just give you a bit of extra grip in the kind of conditions you've seen here today. To control the scooter, we've got our handlebars up top, which has a brake lever on each side, pretty much like any normal bike. And then you have the electronic throttle located on the right hand side, which allows you to control the output power of the motor. There's a small display which gives you various pieces of information including an odometer and battery level and we'll take a closer look a little bit more at this later on. On the left hand side you'll also find a horn as well as a switch. There are built in lights on this bike so we have a standard headlamp on the front as well as a red brake and warning light on the rear. There's also some built in LED strips that go down the sides that activate when you turn the main lights on. The handlebars are fully height adjustable with a lever mounted on the side and the scooter does fold down for easy packing away and carrying. There is a lever on the bottom of the deck which allows you to fold it down horizontally and there's also foldable handlebars as well which allow it just to become more compact. Overall the scooter has pretty much all of the basics covered so let's get back on the trail. And she's still hanging on for dear life, covered in mud, but still going well. Well, I've just made it this far. I had to just walk and push it up a bloody big hill. But we're about halfway round. Sorry, the sun. But it's absolutely freaking stunning here today. Now what I've learned with the scooter is it won't go up hills like this, probably because I'm too fat. I've got halfway up here, 
but something like this i've just got to push it but what i've learned to do is put it in mode one and just use a little bit of throttle just to not let it run away with itself but just to allow it to push itself up the hill that way i'm not bearing the weight of the whole thing it's just not got enough power to carry me up something like this which is hardly surprising you're going to want something with a bit more than i think it was the 800 watts that this has got especially with the lump of weight that i've got I was coming along and i saw this path that says viewpoint so let's go and have a look shall we left the scooter on the side there need to charge my uh, dj action man i'm not in the right shoes for this today i thought hey i'm on a scooter trainers will be fine what could possibly go wrong there's only rivers and streams and oh wow here we go look at this a bench i'll take you right to the end Now, I know you got the sun, but man, look at that. Just beautiful. I'm gonna have a sit down here for 20 minutes and enjoy the day. Okay, so I've made it this far just to show you the view behind me. The scooter is down there, absolutely plastered, but going absolutely fine. I haven't actually checked the waterproof rating on this thing. I don't know if it's going to be okay to hose down. I'll worry about that when I get back. But so far, it's performed absolutely flawlessly. Battery-wise, we're still showing a one bar below full, but it is going down a bar when um i'm on the scooter so you are starting to see some sag on the cells now but overall it has definitely lost its punch i can tell that however it's still going absolutely fine and then just to bring you back to the lake so what i'm gonna do is get the backpack out and i'm gonna fly the defender 20. Starting to see a big puddle there. I'm just gonna go around it. Ooh. Opposite where we started. Now this side's a lot flatter on the move across. much as speed as I carry is going to get me up there. No it won't. <laughs> so I've made it three quarters of the way around. I'm just at the bottom end of the dam. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Scooter's over there. I've just had to walk with it up a big hill. But I am really impressed so far I have to say. I'm knackered from walking up that hill as you can hear. <laughs> However, we're on to the smooth stuff now. So I'm gonna actually get the camera mounted on the scooter. I got it on the bars there. And hopefully I can show you a bit footage from the scooter itself. 
I've been hanging the DJI from my neck. I don't know how well that's going to work. We're just going to have to see. Just before I go down the hill, I thought I'd give you one last look of what I get to see. Absolutely phenomenal. So let's get to that waterfall. And here we are, we're at the bottom of the waterfall, or the overspill, or whatever we want to call it, spillage. You see the scooter there, made it, no problems at all. But let's not talk about that a minute. Let's talk about that. Got the overspray there. Huge dam. Showing it on that side, all the way along. You can't actually walk across the top, unfortunately. Sadly, you're restricted, you're not allowed on there. But you can get a bit closer up that end, which we will take a look at in a minute. But just phenomenal. Okay guys, so I'm at the top of the dam. There is the building that was at the top, so the overflow is the other side. As I've said, you can't walk across, sadly. But if I just scroll along, you can see over there is the field we were at earlier. So we came all the way along there. We've come all the way around there. The other half of the lake is around there, which we'll take a look at in a second. But it is absolutely phenomenal here today. It really is. Now, once the trip was finished, I popped into the calf to have a bit of a sit down and then got myself a bit of traditional Welsh lunch. Now, when it's time to take the scooter home, it does fold down fairly compact. You can fold the handlebars down on each side. You simply pull back the collets and allow them to drop down. And then in the middle at the bottom, you've got the release lever, which locks the whole frame assembly in place. You release that and then there's a secondary latch that you let up that allows the main bar to fold down horizontally. And that locks in place as well, allowing you to carry the scooter via that main bar. But there's also some extra little wheels on the bottom on the front on each side that come into play once the main wheel is off the ground that does allow you to move it around as well. As you can see, it will fit into the boot of a fairly decent family-sized car, but it does take up a bit of space and it is worth noting that this scooter is far from the lightest thing I've ever lifted. Okay, now before we wrap this video up, I just want to share with you some additional thoughts from the day, my experience with the scooter that I didn't talk about in the video, some pricing info, and just talk about the product in general. Now, just to be clear, I was sent it for free. However, they have not seen this video before it's been published, and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. I'm not really classing this as a review either, because I'm not testing the ins and outs of every aspect of this scooter. For instance, I can neither confirm or deny the mileage claims that they say you can get from the battery. I can neither confirm or deny the maximum speeds. All I can share with you is my opinions on the testing that I've done. There are complications using these scooters in the UK. They are not legal on the road. So as such, the only places you can use them is off-road. And that obviously has an effect on the kind of testing that I've been able to do. Now, before we talk about my experience, I do just want to talk about pricing and a few things on the spec. Now, as I've said, the model they sent me over was the iScooter iX5. That is the off-road electric scooter, and it is currently £565.99 in the UK, 
down, they say, from 825. Now, their website has all of the specs on. There will be a link to this scooter in the description where there may be offers available as well. And if we just take a look down, as I shared earlier in the video, the main specs are as follows. 800 watt motor, they say 28 miles max range. I can't confirm that. 28 miles an hour. I didn't quite see that in my testing. 10 inch tires, it'll hold 330 pounds load capacity and it will hill climb 35 degrees. And they go over all of the other specs on the website, as I've talked about already. We've got the independent suspension on the front and back 800 watt motor we've got the built-in 720 watt battery pack you can fold it down to carry it just like this it is available with that seat attachment as well that I mentioned earlier there you can see it in that configuration I haven't showed you it in that configuration in this video but it is available like that out the box I've got them down there I just haven't fitted them if we then go back to the site and scroll down really more than anything everything I covered pretty much in this video is here so again it just gives you an overview of everything charge time six to eight hours as i've said and they do include the charger in the kit as well i haven't showed you that here but there's not really a lot to show on that other than it's a large brick charger that you plug in looks fairly dumb the charge circuit appears to be in the scooter itself Okay, so to share with you my thoughts on the iX5 from iScooter. Now, I have to say, I'm actually really impressed that it does what they said it does. It's an off-road scooter, and it handled that place really well. That was a torture test by any means, and it put up with everything, no problems at all. Nothing fell off, nothing came loose. There were areas of that trip that were extremely bumpy, and it put up with it. Yes, it struggles on hills. That is something I'm going to talk about a bit more in a minute, but on the flat on the straights and on the downhills it just did exactly what I expected it to the suspension does a real nice job of soaking up the bumps you will bottom it out at times if you hit something a bit hard but honestly it just glided over most of the stuff and I didn't feel any real vibration too much through my hands on the bars or through the main kick plate or standing plate it was all absolutely fine with regards to the battery life from that trip, I did about 8.2 kilometers, and by the time I got to the end, it was showing about two bars of battery left. That's about a quarter to under left of the capacity. What I will say though on the battery is the battery monitor I don't think is very intelligent. It does vary a lot. So what you were finding was when I was pausing and then allowing the battery to settle, suddenly it was showing like three quarters of a battery and then you get it under load and then it would drop down quickly. The ammeter on it doesn't seem that sophisticated and it seems to be more tracking voltage, which means it's gonna give you inaccuracies at times. Considering that was a very rough track, I think eight kilometers is pretty good to three quarters of a battery. That means you're going to get probably about 10 to 12 kilometers off road. But obviously on road, there's going to be a dramatic difference. And as I showed, we were going up hills as well. And whilst it didn't go up every one and I had to pull it up, it definitely did push its way through some. I did notice by about quarter of the way around the battery had started to lose its punch a little bit so that first quarter of the trip there was quite a bit of punch in it then it felt just a bit more subtle a bit more laid back but even by the end even at sort of eight kilometers it didn't feel sluggish it absolutely felt fine but it just didn't have that punch it had originally now, with regards to the build quality and the overall fit and finish of the scooter, it's okay. It's not the best and it's not the worst. It is solid, although there is a little bit of movement in the upright when you are traveling. It's not a huge amount, but there is a little bit there, but it certainly isn't anything that concerns me. What I will say is some of the fittings and finishes are not great. For instance, when I opened it up, a few of the bolts on the scooter were a little bit rusty. It's never a great sign when you're opening a new product out the box that when you look at a nut, there's rust on it. And what I have noticed is after washing it down, and it is IPX, let me just check what IP rating it is. I did check this in the instructions. It is IPX4 rated, however, after its first wash, I've started to get rust on a number of the screws already. So again, I think there are some areas that they could improve things. 
Further to that, some of the plastics on the controls do feel cheap. And what I mean by that is the brakes and everything are absolutely fine, but the controls for the throttle is all plastic, and I like that to have been metal rather than plastic. One good knock, and you're going to break that, and the scooter is going to be out of action. I would have preferred all of the major components to have been metalwork rather than plastic. I've got no issues with the light switch and the horn on the left hand side being plastic, but that throttle and display assembly should be metal in my opinion. As for the brakes on the scooter, they're pretty good. They're not the best, they're not the worst. They are disc brakes. They are quite hard to pull. I think the routing of the cables does add some tension. Actually, it might be an idea if you do get one of these to actually strip the cables out and grease them all the way down. I suspect that would improve the feel of the brakes dramatically and that's something I will probably do on this one in the future but they absolutely have no problem controlling the speed of the scooter and slowing you down downhills. The one thing I do want to mention on this scooter is its weight. It basically comes in at 28 kilos, half a human. It's certainly something you notice whilst you're carrying. As I showed in the video it does fold down nice and compact and you can carry it by that arm no problem at all but it does have some weight to it but I personally didn't have any problems lifting it in and out of the car but it it is worth understanding that this certainly isn't a light product. Overall, it's a really interesting product and I actually thoroughly enjoyed spending some time with it and it is going to get more use in the future. I can't comment on if it's good value or not. I'm not someone that reviews scooters all of the time and certainly not going to be someone who does either. I think as a product that said it was an off-road scooter, it absolutely delivers in that respect. There are areas where I think it could be better. What I would say is I would get it apart in a couple of places just to sort of improve lubrication here and there, get a coat on some of the nuts and bolts, some WD-40 or some anti-corrosive coating just to make sure it doesn't start to rust if you're using it in wet conditions and overall you should be fine. Now I'm really interested in knowing what you think about this video and this scooter. If you have any questions put it in the comment section below and I will try and answer it. I want to say a big thank you to iScooter for sending this one over. It has been an interesting experience and one I enjoyed and I'm going to be doing more of it in the future. If you're interested in seeing more content like this I would love to know. It isn't something I intend to do a lot of but it is nice to break away from the usual drone and FPV stuff from time to time. Anyway that's it from me on this one. If you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to it in the description. Stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.